Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Next Week Now, your number one source for the hot text in the curiosity format. I'm Tracky, and joining with me, as always, is Jayfish. Jayfish, hello. How are you doing today? Howdy. I'm good. And for those of you who are just joining in, don't know what curiosity is, well, we should have a helpful description down in below this video uh and for those of you who learn best by uh hearing the thing curiosity is a 40 card format using cards from the most recent standard legal set well usually it's standard legal set Some, sometimes we do other sets anyways that's the exception to the rule in this case phyrexial will be one the f format is designed to kind of be like a mix between like a limited and constructed. It's basically the best way to describe it is your decks are like the optimal limited deck you can get. Um, to mirror that limited format, we have rarity restrictions. You may only have two max rares or mythics in the main with singleton copies of each. That means you can't just be running uh, two Elish Norns. You have to be as you see here, running an Elish Norn and an Eternal Wanderer. Um, six max uncommons, with two max of each individual copy of an uncommon. And then commons, you can have as many as you want, but you can only have three max of a individual copy of a common. Um, Eight-card sideboards, we play pretty much every Saturday at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time. Um, we are pretty far into the season, but you can still drop in at any time. You, you don't need to be playing from the start. Just jump in any time. And you don't even need to show up during Saturdays. You can usually ask for a game uh, during uh, the weekdays, and there should be somebody there who's more than willing to uh, scrimmage with you. So yeah, uh, that is Curiosity. It's a whole bunch of fun. One of my favorite ways to play Magic. Um, and for our deck for today, we have got Blue-White Artifacts. Um, have you ended up playing... Did you play against like this deck at all like throughout the season or no? <laughs> Because I don't think it's Against? shown up. I don't think it's shown up. I don't think so, but I think I played something similar in some casual games. Yeah. Uh, I found decent success with it. Like, I got my first 3 0 of the season, <laughs> which I was happy to get. I, I was falling behind. Uh, but now I have a good shot at finals contention. Um, so. It's an artifacts list. Um, most of the stuff is going to be your standard fare with artifacts. Um, for the rares, I have the aforementioned uh, Elish Norn. Um, fantastic card. Um, uh, five mana, four, seven with Vigilance is just like a big body. And it the doubling up on the ETBs is great with all the cards I have. So you got some basic things, like your Mandible, Justiciar, which gets plus one, plus one on an artifact ETB. Um, I have Malkator, which scribes two on ETB. Chrome Prowler, which, like, taps target creature on ETB. Basilica Shepherd, which creates two Phyrexian Mites on ETB, now creating four. But looking at the uncommons, you also have, like, Ossification, now exiles two things. Uh, same with Annex Entry. And Unctus's Retrofitter causes two artifacts to become 4-4s. Four so, Elish Norn is a very powerful card uh, on that front. Good body, good effect that benefits you. And also the uh, harm to the opponent is also always nice. Uh, other rare is the Eternal Wanderer, because the Eternal Wanderer is busted. <laughs> I th I think I learned my lesson uh, for why I did the good this week. It's because I played bombs. <laughs> I don't think I was doing 
many bombs earlier weeks in the season. So, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, the odd card out is my three of Glistener Sears. Uh, I needed something to deal in the early game to, like, block toxic creatures. And Glistener Seer works out great in that regard. So... Good choice on my on my end to choose that card. Uh, sideboard, you got three and scissor gliders. Uh, well, technically, it's possible to corrupt your opponent. It's very unlikely to happen. Mainly, and scissor glider is just there as a two mana one three flyer, <laughs> um, which it is also there for the uh toxic matchup uh a one three flyer does a good job of blocking uh toxic stuff um planar disruptions uh, as additional removal uh, and then a couple of vanish into eternities to deal with a problematic uh non-creature permanence um also good to bring in during the Toxic matchup, uh, since they play like Skrull's Hive and Planar Disruption, maybe even Eternal Wander. So yeah, there's the deck. Um, yeah, uh, since I, you don't seem to have too much experience with playing with or against the deck, we'll just get into playing with it. Unless you Let's have something to say, uh, Jayfish. Oh, uh, well, I was thinking earlier, like, man, we, we really gave Eternal Wanderer five stars, and it just hasn't shown up too much this season. This format turned out a lot quicker than I think we expected it to be. I mean, it's still a five-star card when it lands. It's just, uh, yeah. I think the main thing is that green has been uh, kind of the dominant color um, in this format. And I will be kicking things off with Silvis's Red Black Proliferate list. Yeah, uh, quite a cool list. It's a very neat list. <laughs> Took me by surprise the first time I encountered this archetype. Uh, and uh, sorry, people, you might uh, be hearing me cough a bunch. Uh, I'm no longer sick, but I tend to have a lingering cough. This is a terrible opening hand. This is good. Um, hmm. Let's see. Against you, I want... Your removal is way too much, so I'll do that. Let's go ahead and listeners here. Bring things off a pretty yeah. reservoir for me. Hmm. We'll do Terramorphic before I do Glisteners here. <laughs> Never want to make that mistake. We have a open deck list uh, for those of you who haven't seen a Curiosity before, so there's no point like hiding, like, what you're going to get with Terramorphic Expanse. Oh, yeah. no. This is where people who were good in a check the deck list may have checked for a counter spell, but I don't think there's one this format for one mana. Well, there is, but it only counters one mana spells. Ah, oh, right, yeah. The, uh, the not good mentor, uh, mental, mis yeah, mentor messed up. Okay, that at least does something. No, you can't do things. You can't. You can't touch this forge. You you like our brass too much. Don't want that. I do want this. Although this does kind of make my listeners here not do anything. 
Uh, Churning Reservoir since Urbrass Forge is quite strong. I mean, Urbrass Forge is really strong. It's one of the strongest rares in the set, in my opinion. Uh, we're just going to go to battle. That's actually a card I'm surprised hasn't uh, seen a uh, suspend yet. Here's one I was a bit surprised to see in this list. Bone Picker Syringe. Scourge, Scourge. I don't know why yeah. I thought that was a thing. Yeah, just, I don't think this deck has too many ways to get toxic counters on people. Besides, yeah, like, I, I don't like, really have. Like, yeah, it, it's a very strange inclusion. It has five ways to put toxic on, but, like, I don't think Blight Belly is really going to be like a super important way to put toxic on you'll kill this but like i can yeah, at you least gotta look at the counters yeah i can i can at least reset things so and it does skip uh one of your churning reservoirs um counter inputs on it so that's nice well, you say that, but if I've set my stop right... No. No, no, never mind. Yeah, because it's a beginning of upkeep, it doesn't work that way. Although that means you probably have, what, Anoint with Affliction? Yeah, Anoint. Okay. Unfortunate. <laughs> Why do you attack and make me block? Ah. Yeah. I mean, it's easier for me to hit attack all. <laughs> that is true. Uh, bottom this. Cool. Let's play Norn. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I should be protected from removal for now, since your removal to deal with Elish Norn would be Vraska's Fall. Yeah. Let's see. I'm safe blocking here. And my Glistener Seer has served its purpose. Good job, Glistener Seer. Let's go ahead and turn my Al Eye of Malkator into a 4-4 four, four twice. We're going to go Volt Charge on the Seer.
So. Yeah, yeah, I messed this up. Okay, I have Malkator. So here we you know, we get to see some of the power of uh, Elash Norn. Yeah, I, I just messed it up. I had a fall in hand. I should have did it in response to the Prowler. Yeah. Uh, I guess we can go... Oh, no, because I can't activate this reservoir. Right, yeah. Good game. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so we got Urbrest Forge, which means Vanish into Eternity is a must include in this matchup. Um, oh, who's playing Vanish into Eternity now? <laughs> okay, fine. Um, yeah, uh, let's see, you're also playing Archfiend of the Dross as well. Planar Disruption could be a good uh, bring-in against that. Like, Especially, like, if I can deal with Urbrass Forge and I can vanish into Eternity your other payoffs, then I have a pretty good chance of winning, so... Or planar disruption, other payoffs. Um, as for what's bad in this matchup, hmm. Surgical skull bombs don't seem the greatest here. And Mandible Justiciars, also not the greatest. I think Justiciar would be fine. I mean, sure, it dies to the minus one, minus one effect, but you need some way to gain life, I feel. Yeah, I think I'll go like this. Huh. <coughs> <coughs> I don't think the Unctus' retrofitters are going to be doing much in this matchup. But, uh, I didn't really have room to put in uncommons into my sideboard. Okay, we'll run it like this. You're definitely bringing in those shrapnel slingers. Yes, sir. I got no lands. <laughs> I've got a fine hand. I do need to find a land, but that's probably going to happen. We'll put that to bottom. Okay. Hey, yo. Let's uh, go ahead and play a Glistener Seer. And let's go ahead and... I probably should have waited. That indicates that, like, you know that I have another land in hand. Oh, my God. So anyways, I have a forge again. Thank you for not attacking. Well, let's find a Vanish. Uh, okay. Like, it, it's not a Vanish, but... 
So anyways, I have an orc fiend of the dragon. Okay. Well, you have Churning Reservoir out, so you won't die to it, but, uh... Well, I do have a Planar Disruption. Still, though, you got the Forge, so... Mm -mm. Definitely need to find an answer for that fast. That is not an answer to it. Slows you down at least. I would have preferred an anoint there. Hey, it's not looking so hot for me. This was a pretty crazy good draw. Yeah, I mean, not much you can do. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm, 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 I'm just dead. Yeah, not much I can do against the turn 3 forge unless, like, I had as good a hand as I did last time. I mean, even last time, like, I should have won that one. It's just I made a mistake. Yeah. Okay, please don't draw, like, forge on turn 3. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, can I please not mulligan either? <laughs> okay, well this hand does not currently have a turn for you to uh, forge. It better not. <sighs> At least this deck, like handles mulligans decently well thanks to Glistener Sphere and uh, I have an Alcator. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of scrying. Yeah, it means that, like, I don't need too many lands in order to make it work, and I also don't need too many non-lands in order to make it work. I can just find what I need. Plus, I could do the whole thing where, like, you know, if when he, you attack with Blight Belly Rad and I block with Glistener Sphere, you're going to need to spend a removal spell uh, on it. Nah, I don't like either of these. <laughs> and hey, that means I can scry with <coughs> Glistener Sphere. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's anoint you so I can get that top gem. Yeah. Sure, whatever. I'm fine with this. If you're using an anoint on a glistener sphere, well, that's just fine because I always have more glistener spheres. True. And I, call I think I'm calling them spheres. <laughs> also. Also true. But, I mean, getting in that first hit of Toxic, it can be pretty relevant sometimes. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you can actually get your Bone Picker's Courage to have uh, Corrupted Enabled. 
Uh, so here, fortunately, I don't have a way to get second hit, so it's just. Well, let's not say never too soon. I'm going to pretend you didn't talk. <laughs> yeah, whispers. And then Voltron. Like I said, we, we need to be more talkative for the audience. <laughs> I know. Like, so. like too often we're just silent. So if I, give, if I give away a play I'm thinking about sometime, um, I will give away a play. And I'll ignore it. I'll pretend as... I'll just act as I normally would in a game. <coughs> Let's get rid of the rat. Let's crack open my spear. This time that it's an actual spear. Rather than me mispronouncing something. Yeah. It'd be only saving me from one damage anyways, so, you know. I'd rather deal four damage to you than gain one life. I I assume you're going to yeah. just get rid of my Chrome Prowler right now, so, like... Well, I mean, I'm thinking about it, but I, I'm also... I gotta be worried about uh, an Elish Norn coming down. But at the same time, if you live in fear, you're never truly living. Said by someone, probably. <coughs> mm. Let's uh, stop drawing lands, please, Deck. I mean, you could have used it to ambush the aspirant. Well, could I have? Could you have? Because I'm it forced to tap with Chrome Prowler, so no, I couldn't. Well, yeah, you just wait till I go to attacks. Uh, I guess that's true, but like, you know, I wanted to deal four damage over that, so it's fine. It's also, fine. also a good point, yeah. Like I'm not I'm not on much of a clock here. So I do think I can't afford to attack knowing knowing that you were playing tap. I'll play this strapnel uh, slinger I've been holding on to forever. No, my eye am Malkator. Now that I don't have to be scared of two blockers, let's get in for one.
play an Annex Sentry. Hmm. Okay. Need to grab a planar disruption for that. Uh, sure, I'll make this trade. Spanish was such a good card. I'd rather have saved it, but... Oh, let's go! See? I told this you. might... might be lethal if I can, again... I guess we enter full control. <coughs> uh, uh... I don't think so. You can't bull charge it. Oh, right, because it's all part of one effect. You're right, yes. I assume you have Volt Charge in hand. Yeah, I have uh, Volt Charge in hand, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I died then. Well, let's pretend you don't have Volt Charge in hand and play it out. <laughs> I mean, if you show me the Volt Charge, I'll concede. Oh, hey, there's Elish Norn. Okay, you, you can concede, or you can just... Well, you attack with the forge. I know. I know you like Arbras so much. Use your avatar. No, oh, there we go. Yep, good game. Good game. You drew bet. You drew your rares. I did not. No, no. I no. real. I really drew my rares. There was only one game where I didn't see both rares. Also, I drew those back to back. Yeah, I just drew Elish Norn the one time and it won me the game. Oh well, still, decent showing for uh, Blue White. Uh, as I said, like I feel like if I drew either of my rares, that could have been my game easily enough. Yeah, they, they are very scary rares. Like, I, I don't think I had a lot of ways to play around them. Like, I, I talked about holding up that Bolt Charge and Drown to maybe kill an Elish Norn. Right, which I'd be happy enough with. Okay, let's uh, see the big boogeyman of the format. This is Merkant's mono green list, I believe. Oh no, I hit I hit play with the red black one again. Uh, uh, um, no, uh, <laughs> Minor, minor technical difficulties. Okay. Just, uh, just get out of here. So uh, for Mercan's list, uh, since we're just doing what was there last week, um, the rares... Oh, I forgot to ask Mercan about our Gentle Masticore. I was yeah, actually interested to seeing how that worked out for him. It's a weird one. It's not a card you would expect to see play, but he did it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure if it was good when he played it, or if the rest of the deck was good enough to make up for it. I think... I only caught like a second of one of his games, but I think it was like, okay. Yeah. But it's still important. To, so the main rare, obviously, for Mono Green are uh, Thrun and Nissa, right? Like those. Are I mean, Vorinclex like... too. He, he's up there. Yeah, I, I could definitely see running Vorinclex instead of Thrun. You definitely want Nissa. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially since like if you're expecting to face off against a bunch of Mono Green, you might want Vorinclex over Thrun in that case. Um, yeah, solid hand. I like it. Uh, As do I. Let's go ahead and get planes. Let's go ahead and put down an evolving adaptive. Nice. I assume my Malkator's Watcher is 
not going to be able to block. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I could block here, but I, I, I'm not going to do that. You know, there's a chance to make my card actually, like, big later. I can turn it into a Sarah Angel. Yep. Five Double B, Sarah Angel. Only playing this Hunter's Maze. But yeah, uh, it's important. Nissa is probably going to get banned, right? Yeah, Nissa for sure are getting banned. I plan on playing Nissa next week, hopefully yep. getting it banned. Same here. Yeah. Uh,. So let's go ahead and fight the cat. Okay. I think that's animal abuse, but okay. That's another one where I gotta say maybe maybe, maybe the cat should have ambush blocked instead of ambushed out. I mean, you have no way of knowing what's in my hand, but... I mean, your... Mercan doesn't play combat tricks, right? Well, he, no, okay, he's he playing, plays he's playing, one, uh, titanic. playing one titanic rope, which I didn't even know was in this format, and we reviewed every card in it. I mean, I'm playing it at a my mono green list as the one. Uh, I think Merkin might be doing it for the same reason I am, where it's like you play it as the one of, so your opponent will always be left wondering. But uh, no, I didn't want to trade a Chrome Prowler for an Evolving Adaptive. I was hoping to tap it down Minor, and then attack with the Chrome Prowler, but you had the Ruthless Predation. Minor issues on my end there. Uh, I should have tapped this. <laughs> Probably going to keep the Scavenger from being able to an attack for an additional turn, so that's kind of a big mess up. Never mind, I drew zero. Play just a CR. Well, I think my Malfador's Watcher is uh Yeah, I just gotta start getting in there because if you get to you get to the Wanderer, right? Things are not looking good. Mm -mm. Or thankfully, a couple of lands away from curse, so might have time. Hmm. This is an interesting choice. But I think I bought him my retrofitter. Hmm. I, mean, I don't know about that. Turning just a car into a 4-4 four four seems pretty right, good. Right, right. Um... You must have something good going on in hand. There we go. Yeah, I, I need a uh, removal spell. I'm on the back foot at this point. Thankfully, Glistener's here, and I can just chump it at any time and be, like, perfectly happy with it. I, I, Glistener's here is, like, I, I love the card. It, it's good. It's a very good card. How do we, uh, we rate it? I feel like we were probably a little bit 
a little bit like I just think I gave overlooked it a it. three. I feel like I overlooked it. I, I would that. think so too. I think I have more experience playing Scryfish than you do, so. The block there. You might have Titanic growth in hand, but like, you know, that's a one of, and there's no point in not blocking the Contagious Vorak. And I'll take three. Will you ever block my white disinfection from multicolor? Less than or equal to the value of the thing. Okay. Also, an uncommon that I don't particularly like, but hey, maybe it's good. Maybe I'm just playing my list wrong. Yes, keep. Now, you could have an oil gorger troll in hand or Zopendrel or something. But, uh, still. You definitely got, you definitely got all, no. You might have just kept the land there to Elishnorn. Oh, no, I had it, it uh, her in her hand since, I think, the start of the game. That's why I put a retrofitter to the bottom, actually, because I was searching for another land. You also cannot really like play out your hand with Masticor, which yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm realizing that's kind of a problem now. <laughs> and attack if you're a four seven, right? Well, so I, I guess... mean, if you had Titanic Rift, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good point. Let's let's see about that. Anyways, back to you. Okay. Well, Glistener Sphere. I, I said Sphere again. So, I like this next thing I'm going to be doing. You might think it's cool as well. Yeah, I... Um... But particularly yes, what I'm going to do with it is this. Yeah, I'm still fine with this. Yay! Neelish Norn value, let's go. No, I'm like, listeners here. Uh, gotta go back to you again now. Okay, now's the point where I just make my tokens. Although, Argenta Masticor can destroy the tokens. That's a thing. He can. Let's scry four. <laughs> okay, it's not as good as scrying four, but. Hmm. Would you say it's as good as scrying furry? Hmm. In this case, no, since I'm just scrying two. So I do have a troll. No, my Norn. That's very unfortunate. We're just gonna have to go... Just gonna have to go like Manticore face. Like, I don't think I can bother attacking Wanderer. 
because you either you either jump block with the token, and then right. minus four yeah. next turn, right. keeping the yeah. annex and killing Manticore probably, leaving me with troll. Right. Or I just keep on making tokens and jumping flirt forever. Well. I mean, because if she goes down to two, goes down to one, at least you can't wrath. So there is kind of some argument to attack her, even if you're most likely just walk with the token. Yeah, I could, I could see that. I think, I think that's the only way I, I can win the game. Like, no, I mean, I'm just gonna block with the token. So. Yeah. I don't think just sitting here trying to go face and you having a raft just waiting to go is a good strategy. And then I'm just going to ossify your master core. Yep. You still have Zopin Drill in the deck, though, so. I do, but there's no. <laughs> Although you do only have five mana. So. That too. Yeah, we're, we're just have to concede here. I don't think there's a way out of this. Yeah, Wander is scary. Your sideboard, though, is really strong against me because you have Carnivorous Canopy. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. I do that. Okay. I'm glad I won game one there, though, since I am now on the back foot in game two and three with uh, the canopies in the main. I am also kind of curious to know if Merc can't widow what, 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 what his thinking behind the rare was. Because it seems like, um, and this might just be my own bias, I would have liked to play the six mana enchantment that makes two beasts, personally. Maybe I like he hasn't gotten it yet. <laughs> yeah, like, like, that's the thing. It was like literally just unlocked for me, so he probably just didn't have it. I wonder how they do the mastery pass for uh, points. Yeah, whether we'll like unlock all the jumpstart cards from it. Yeah. Hopefully this time they don't give us styles for the March cards. For, for, for the audience not aware, uh, jumpstart uh, rare or legal in curiosity. Yes, because they are technically part of the set. Although it is a bit unintuitive, that is true. No, no, I do not want that. Get rid of Adaptive. Adaptive is such a strong card. It is very strong. Because it's so easy to get it ticking up. Yeah. Let's see what you got. Mantis, huh? Let's see. Nah. I don't have the lands for that. There we go. Hmm. 
Let's let's play planar disruptions. There's a bit there's a bit of a bad play because you can attack now, but uh <laughs> It's true. What if I uh turned it into a twenty twenty somehow? Yeah. Ooh, incubation sack. That's that's a good one. I'm gonna have to use another planar disruption on that. Bottle that. That's right. I drew all three of them. <laughs> Uh, let's play a mandible. And Glistener Seer is now in the chump phase of the game. I think we're just gonna attack for four right now. Yeah, I mean I'm I would chump it no matter what, so there's no purpose to making a five. Except if you wanna like block my mandible just to CR. Uh -oh, let's return the mantis to hand. Well, I've, I've just realized a massive mistake I've made. I'm wondering what it is. You should let me know for the commentary. <laughs> oh, you 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 probably figure it out now. Oh, that you had carnivorous canopies in hand this whole time. Yeah, not this whole time. Only the last turn. I thought it was an instant. Oh. Crap, Gorger, go. Elish Norn, go. I, I love how Rustvine Cultivator, like, it has so much oil on it. The oil does absolutely die. <laughs> like, unless you're playing uh, the Filigree Silex, then. Yeah, at some point you just gotta start picking it up, even if it doesn't do anything. Just because you might maybe need to make 10 mana this game. Who knows? It's definitely one of the more annoying cards to play with. I do not want to trade Elish Norn here. I'm fine trading a mandible just to CR. I'm also fine trading. Let's play Mandible, and let's play Octus. Come on, fight spell. Mm -mm. At this point, yes, I am fine if Norn dies. Okay. You know, just in case you did have something. But if you did have something, I was fine if Norn died. I got my value off on this as Retrofitter.
Hmm. Surprising. Oh, I thought you would have gone, uh, I guess if you were just going to activate the ability anyways, yeah, just doing that instead of Contagious Warrack is the way to go. Ooh, did you get the fight spell? No. Oh, okay. Now, if I got the fight spell, I'd be feeling pretty good right now, but as it is, I'm kind of just hanging on by a thread. Yeah, I mean... The threat is very light. Uh, I don't know if this is lethal. Math is for blockers. It's definitely lethal. <laughs> see, see, the problem there is you're the math guy, as I've established many times. Yeah, but you're the blocker, so that means math has become your uh, suit now. <laughs> uh, good game. Good game. Uh, nice showcase there for uh, Blue White being able to beat uh, Mono Green. Uh, yeah, let's see how it does against a deck that I don't think it can beat, ever. Hold on, hold on. I got a pack. I got Leer. The, uh, the flash pack guy? Yay. Remember when Leer was, like, a really powerful card in the meta? Yeah. This is, uh, Bone and Arrow. Red-green list. Yeah, red green. Uh, I don't think it's as strong as mono green. It's definitely better against uh, my deck. That's for sure. Yeah, it's it's definitely better for this matchup. That said, uh, I don't think a no lander is a good hand. Yeah, mine's not the greatest hand, but uh, I can make do with it. I hope. I didn't mess something up here. Got a card I'm not too sure about in my hand right now. What is it? So you'll you see. You make it a surprise. <laughs> well, there's my mandible. There we go. I didn't have a island in my opener. I was hoping, like, you know, since I could always sacrifice Skull Bomb to draw a card, that I'd be fine. Plus, I had uh, my Mandible. Yeah. Oh, I was going to do something else, but keeping you off the life pain, I think it was very important. I said I had my mandible. <laughs> the triple. <laughs> that means all of them. Yeah, evolving adaptive, the synergy with contagious Vorak is really good. Like you're not proliferating there, but like, you know, if you did. Yeah, it'd be really good. And like I'm taking the adaptive here rather than uh, the Vorak, obviously. For one, I don't want you to get the other ETB. Um, but also, adaptive is scarier. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that trade. Anyways, here's the card I'm not sure if I was supposed to put in the deck, because wasn't this just suspended? Oh, it's no longer suspended. Yeah, I, I told you to put uh, Nissa in the deck. Oh. Rude. Very low starting loyalty, Nissa. Some would say the weakest starting loyalty, Nissa. I mean, Nissa is insanely good against my deck. Definitely jump block in here. <laughs> right, yes. Because you can just destroy my surgical skull bomb next turn. Granted, I get to draw cards when doing so, but... That, you yeah, know, that, that's an option. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, though. I mean, yes, you can also uh, just kill my Yonkis' retrofitter. We're also going to decline to take a land here. Ugh. That's really bad for me. 
way I can start making some relatively big guys. But besides that, I'm out of cards. Yeah, I am not happy with my situation right now. Is yeah. it just me, or have these, uh, the, the Phyrexianized Planeswalkers, I don't know the right term for them, but the, the black variants, have they started looking better somehow? Uh, yes, they did uh, make them borderless. Uh. In the most recent patch, I think that was. Ugh. I need Wanderer. I mean, even then, Wanderer... Yeah, it doesn't do it. Do yeah, Nyssa is the strongest card in the set, probably. That does something. It does do something. Let's go take up. Okay, cool. You're probably going to lead me with the rust vine here, I guess. I could also leave you a scrap gorger as well. That'd be a viable thing. I don't know, Scrap Gorger at least gets big eventually. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, I'll do Rust Vine. So actually, now that you've hit Wanderer, is there a way I could possibly win this? Because you can always just tick up to kill my token. Right. Plus, uh, yeah. in my hand, I've got cards that will win the game. I don't know. I will play that out, but I think it might be too late now. In fact, uh, yeah, we're just going to concede. Yeah, I had a Chrome Prowler and Annex Sentry in hand as well. So with Norn out, that's, you know, a lot of things. So, whew, I actually beat the unbeatable. Yeah, but, well, no, this deck isn't playing what's-his-name. Yeah. Run. No, no, the other one. The uh the four 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 for free. Who blows up four. artifacts and enchantments. Oh Mig oh that's because uh Mig Laws is uh suspended this week. Oh. Right, this is the one that won. Right, and, right, uh, yes. Yeah, so Mig Laws and uh Dragonwing Glider were suspended. Miglaws is one that definitely deserves a suspension. Miglaws is a strong card. I don't think it deserves to be banned, but I think it's like a card that, like, you know, it can have a suspension under its belt. Um... Is I Vanish into Vanish Eternity is even good in this matchup? It's not, is um, it? Yeah, I'd probably play it to kill... Forge. I'm wondering if I should be. Playing oh yeah, that's right, right, Forge. right, right, right. You have Forge. 
Wait, I do think I'm going to go like this. Hmm. I don't want these. I wonder why Bone chose to go with a single Terramorphic Expanse and one Hunter's Maze. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting land choice. I think we're all just scrambling for what lands we should play. <laughs> hmm. I think I go like this. Not the greatest hand, but it's keepable. Now, if it had a turn one Glistener Seer, I would love this hand. And a turn... oh, never mind. What will I be doing on turn three, I wonder? <laughs> oh no, probably something strong. Um. Uh, let's do that. Oh, I baited you. I have nothing. <laughs> Still, uh, armored scrap gorger will eventually become a three-three. So uh, it, there's no harm in doing that. This was the uh, the very next car on top of my deck. <laughs> oh, let's go, contagious Vorak. Always losing. Let's go. <laughs> Exile the Restvine Cultivator. Um, sure. Hmm. I mean, Hexgold Slash kills it anyways. Ruthless Predation kills it anyways. You can't play Cinder Slash Ravager. If you side it in the Volt Chargers, then yeah, I'm kind of got, but I'm fine. Or like Tyvar Span or something. But yeah, I wouldn't really call this God. It's just something I've got to do. Yeah, it's, it's still a one for one, which I'm fine with. Planes. Hmm, not attacking with thrust fine, huh? Interesting. You know, you know, try and draw a card. Ah, okay. Norn. So, through these games, what do you think of Elish Norn? Because I am super impressed by her. She's solid. What? I'm more worried you... about the Wanderer. God. You got Titanic, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Ruthless Predation. Okay. So one of your creatures would have died, but then, like, the other one would be able to kill Norn. So that would be a two for one, but... I don't know. Maybe I overthought it. Let's exile. Dude, this fine cultivator always makes me have responses. And 
the plug listeners here. Okay, so you have You could have also signed it in tie bar stand. I'll keep that in mind. I'm not risking Norn. Okay. Now I will risk Norn. Cool. Yep. Well, that'd be cool. Four. <laughs> okay. You told me the matchup was unwinnable. I thought it was too, but there we go. I thought it had the, I thought it had the four four guy. Because with the four four guy, it does seem unwinnable. Yeah, especially with Nissa as the other one. But there we go. A solid performance for blue white artifacts. Lost one game, but decently close games. And two other. The mono green matchup was a pretty decisive win, and then. He had red green, which was pretty strong too. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts on the deck? Yeah, it's a fun deck. Got some good rares, like you said. You really do need balmy rares, and <laughs> that does not look like it's going to be changing anytime soon. Yeah, this is not a um, this is not a popper format. This is very much a prince format. But yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, blue-white, I still don't, even though it had a good showing against, like, mono-green, I still don't think blue-white is the best deck in the format by any means. Um, we didn't get to see it, but it also had good showing against the, uh, toxic decks as well. Um, I played, I think, two, let me check, I think I played two toxic lists, but I could have played more, let's see. Yes, I played against two Toxic Lists. Uh, no, wait. Okay, I played against one Toxic List. Got it. But it did well against that. Um, and, yeah. Um, so it's a solid deck to bring in if you're looking to kind of mix things up a bit. And perhaps uh, when other decks get nerfs uh, through bannings, then it might be the time for Blue White to shine in like the finals or something. So overall, it's a fun deck to play. I like it a lot, uh, especially when you get uh, Elish Norn down. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with uh, Norn. Um, and yeah, it's a strong deck. Anything else you want to say, Jfish? Sure. Or... Um, would you consider playing Skiv's Hive in it? Because I think that card's really good. It is, but I don't think it's the kind of bomb I'm looking for in this deck. Like, I think Wander for sure is, like, something I need to play, right? Like, there are matchups that are unwinnable that Wander, like, wins. Like, that Nissa matchup we just saw, right? Yeah. And then Elish Norn, I I was super impressed with her during the week I played this deck and also during our games just now. I thought Norn dominated the board every single time I played her. Cause I mean she she is a very big wall. Yeah. yeah and you she, can also just attack with her. Yeah. And like when I get to actually double my enter the battlefield effects, like when I did my double ossifications like that's a really strong swing so i mean i could consider bringing in hive uh if norn or wanderer were to get suspended slash banned 
uh, for sure. But even then, I'm not so sure. I'd have to think about it. It's it's less an artifact. It's okay. I I don't know if saying it's a less an artifact deck is the right thing to say. It's kind of controlly though, isn't it? Yeah, you don't really care that, like, like you don't really care about artifact creatures. You you kind of controlly, yeah. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not phrasing that the best way. Yeah, but. like because like there are like artifact synergies with the mandible, just as Yarankas is retrofitter, I of Malkator, but it's all like to kind of like control the board ish, right? So it's hard to describe. <laughs> Anyways, uh. We good? Yeah, we good. Until next time, folks. Wait, well, I say that, but there's something we gotta do first. <laughs> yep. Do do do. Boom ba. Do 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 ba. Disney don't sue us. Do what? Next week now. You take care of yourself, Jayfish. Bye. I say bye. Hold on. Hold on. And record.